Tony Roberts. So let me start over again with, because this message is incredibly important to share. As I reflect over my own life, I can identify moments that shaped who I've become. Those moments may have been you know, big joyous moments like the, the moment I had my first child or even small conversations I had with people. But it was those moments that in an instant, my mind became changed. And so um, we are very fortunate and privileged today to watch the unfolding of someone's life-defining moment, and that's Alice Parnas. Alice Parnas is our speaker today. And today she is going to share a deeply held secret that she has had. And I think it takes incredible bravery and courage to do that. But so incredibly proud of Alice. But more than proud, I'm happy for her. I'm happy because Alice will be released from the power that secret has over her. The power and from fear that the secret might get out. You know, fear of judgment or shame. And by telling her story, that secret won't be a secret anymore and it will no longer have power over Alice. And so I'm happy for her that she'll be freed from it. Now, Alice's story not only has the potential to be a life-defining moment for her, it has the potential to be a life-defining moment for you as well. Alice's story could be that thing that sparks a changing of your mind and helps you see the world just a little differently. And so with that, whether you're watching from LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook, I would love for you to help me welcome to the stage, Alice Parnas. Thanks, Melissa. Well, here I am, and uh, it's been a couple of months uh, getting this ready, but I'm ready to share my story. My story today is about instincts and clues to a mystery I was, be, I was able to, to actually solve. And what I'd like to do is just step back a couple of years. I received from some good friends a very unusual birthday gift. It was a DNA kit. I was a little surprised. I really didn't understand too much about DNA kits, but I certainly learned quickly. Sent away for it, and in the mail came a box about this size. In the box, when you open it up, is a little tiny vial, a little bit of solution, you spit in it, shake it up, put it in, and mail it away. I was very nervous actually mailing it away. But little did I know how much this was going to change my life. I had no idea of what was going to happen. I'm gonna step back a little bit and I'm going to take you to grade one, six years of age. When I was six, I was bullied a lot. I was chased home by the boys in class. They'd throw stones and snowballs at me. They'd call me little blackie, little chocolate girl. It hurt. The stones hurt. The snowballs hurt. But what hurt more, thinking back, was inside. I didn't understand. Why were they calling me this? I was white. I lived in a very white community. A couple of years went by. I was about eight, nine years old. A group of kids, my friends, on the street, decided one day, and I can hear the ringing in my ears, capture her, let's get her. They decided they were going to gang up on me. Pull her over to the tree. Let's, let's grab her and wrap her around that tree. Get the rope. They got the rope. Lucky for me, the rope was too short. All I could hear was they wanted to bring me up the stake. I ran so fast to get home. I was able to struggle my way out of being captured by my friends. I was traumatized. I still am a little bit, actually. I can feel myself, you know, when I think about that. I was traumatized. If only they would have caught themselves to identify 
not identify, just, just catch themselves and not classify me into something. It was, it was difficult. About 11 years old, my mother took me aside. She was crying. She was really upset. She said, Alice, I have something to tell you. When your dad and I got married, you were born three months later. I was shocked, but at the same time, I was thrilled. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, mom, I thought I was adopted all this time and I'm so happy. Like, I'm so happy. Don't worry. Don't, you don't have to cry. There's nothing to be ashamed of or anything like that. I just, I was happy. I was thrilled. I had an instinct all of this time building up and that's when I really started to listen to my instincts because I was right. Something was off and I knew there was something. So now a clue to the mystery I had, I thought was solved. High school came along and like all high school kids, we have a tough time growing up. For me, I felt like I really stood out at this school. I looked different than other kids did. So to compensate for that, what I tried to do, if this is when my creativity started coming up because I started designing clothes for myself, sewing for myself. The brighter, the better, the more patterns, the better. I went to secondhand stores. I joined social clubs, dance, theater, sports. I was in all the sports. And I did that so that I could connect because it was the only way I felt like I could connect. And with my clothes, I wanted to hide myself behind my clothes so that they would look at my clothes and not look at me. 18, 19 years old. By this time, I had been working for a couple of years, but my self-esteem was not in a good place. I really started to not like myself. Actually, I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to commit suicide. I wanted to get rid of me. I was ugly. I, 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 I didn't like myself at all. Somewhere, somehow, I was able to draw on the strength of my youth. And I was able to run away because fear had grabbed me. Or through my high school days. And somehow that resonated with me and I was able to pull through this and I decided I need a solution. So what I did is I joined modeling. I thought if I take modeling and I take self-improvement classes, then you know I'm gonna look beautiful and things will be great and things will be all better and all of that. So I joined. What happened was they taught me how to white out my face, how to get rid of my freckles, how to get rid of my darker skin, pull my hair back or cut it off later on, wear hats, wear bandanas, hide who I was. So here they were helping me hide. And then finally, after a year and a half or so, they said, you know what, I'm sorry, but your look is not sellable. I was devastated. I was really devastated. But then inside of me, what happened was I started going, what? Like strength came up in me where I was like, I don't have to hide myself. I don't have to wear makeup to hide my freckles. I don't have to cover my hair. It is what it is. And somehow it kind of turned around and that self-esteem that I actually went there for actually started coming to me. I started believing in myself and I started liking who I was. Around 24, 25 years of age, I connected with my auntie. I said, auntie, I have something I really need to talk to you about. Something is bothering me. It keeps coming up in my mind. And maybe you can help me with this. I said, am I adopted? It came back to me again. She goes, oh no, dear. Maybe not adopted. I said, well, do in my 
is my mom, my mom, is my dad, my dad, because I feel like something is different. I am different from my siblings. Something, again, my gut instinct telling me. My auntie said, your mother is your mother. And your father is your dad who raised you. And I was kind of, uh, the way she said it, I was a little bit questioning and I didn't know exactly what that was. But I felt, okay, a little bit of a clue, more. No, I'm okay now. It's all okay. Time went on. And what I found was that people needed to classify me for themselves. So I would get the questions or comments. You're very unique looking. You're very different looking. Oh, you're unusual looking. These are not a few comments that I've heard just a few times. I've heard these comments many times. What's your background? I would try to tell them. Never satisfied. Are you mulatto? I didn't even know what mulatto meant when they first asked me. No. During this time in my life, I really started to embrace my differences. I felt like I was in a cocoon, coming out and transforming into a butterfly. I became a very successful entrepreneur, a couple of businesses, I started liking my creative side. I started creating more. I started to be more innovative. I realized who I was and I really started to transform. I started to learn. This brings me to my DNA story. When I received all the information from my DNA story, one of the first things that I saw was that I had a black cousin. It took me by surprise, for sure, but I felt, oh, okay. So I connected. We went on a journey together for about a year and a half. I connected with different, other different wonderful cousins within the same family group, and they all helped me. And what I found out is that the dad I was raised with was not my dad. My father was black. My biological father was black. When I found out, I was shocked and relieved all at the same time because now I knew, I knew that this mystery was now completely solved. What else I had found out, and I was completely taken by surprise, was that I have two other siblings, a brother and a sister. And my sister and I have connected and a brother, and we've been intentional about building a relationship that we haven't had for so many years. And I'm so happy. And I'm so thankful that she has included me in her life and made room for me in their family. I am thankful for my mom who raised me the best way that she could. And my dad that I grew up with, he was my hero truly was my hero. I wasn't prepared for all the other questions, the feelings that come with it. The questions where I had to talk about DNA within my families. Uh, there was a lot of surprises and for them also, for them to accept this Alice that they didn't know about on both sides of the family with my background. But I'm moving through it, and I'm moving on, and I'm doing great, and I'm really happy about all of it. I'd like to leave you with a little gift, a self-help gift. I call it a kit 
CRT. So C, catch yourself if you're trying to classify others. Just don't, you don't need to. I, trust your inner gut. Trust your inner self. It will give you strength and you're able to call on it from your past when there's times you need it. And T for trust. Trust your instincts. We all have them. We just have to learn to trust them. I am addressing my heritage. My mother is white, French, Canadian. My father is black, Caribbean. My dad is of European descent. And for those who would like to classify me, I am mixed. I am biracial. I am mixed. Nice. Thank you for listening to this. Alice, amazing job. Wonderful job. And honey, you're free. You are free from that secret. I'm so happy for you. And as you just take a deep breath, I bet you feel an incredible release. We're so proud of you. Now, for every community keynote show, we conduct a fundraiser. One, of the money that will go to a charity of the speaker's choice. And then a portion of that will help fund the production of community keynotes. And it's really easy to do. If Alice's story has touched your heart, I ask that you would help us fund the future possibilities for kids, which is Alice's chosen charity. They help focus on leadership, unique leadership programs for children in the greater Toronto area. And it's really easy to give. You can text, you can scan the QR code on the screen, or you can go to givebutter.com forward slash community keynotes. And we have another fun way for you not only to give, but to wear Alice's message in your heart and on your sleeve. So Alice's story and some of the, the art that she created during this journey, we have turned it into merchandise, bags, journals, and t-shirts that you can purchase. 10% of those proceeds will benefit the future possibilities for kids. So to grab your own uh, piece of Alice's story, visit storystore.us. And with that, I would like to invite the entire crew back on the screen. We have co-producer Armand Roberts, we have the Alice Parnas, and we have Valley Stone, Alice's best friend. Thank you. Welcome You're back, welcome. everybody. So excellent job, Alice. We're very, very proud of you. We're going to start off with some questions to ask. So my first question for you, Alice, is what emotions were going through your mind when you discovered that you had a Black parent? I want to say relief and peace. Peace in my body, peace in my mind that I just know now. It didn't matter to me whether it's black or brown or green or orange. It really was about just finding out the pieces and that's what meant the most to me. So. Excellent. Great. My next question, I'm going to take it off mute, is for Vali. And I want to ask you, what inspired you to give Alice the DNA test? Hi, Al. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to share this experience with you. It's such a gift. Um, it was actually a birthday gift for Alice. And in the 50 years that I've known Alice, she's often said that she always felt different. And that plagued her. Never in a million years would we have thought that that DNA test was going to change her life the way it did. She now has two amazing families that really love and support her. Awesome. Now for you, Alice, what philosophies or beliefs changed when you made this discovery? I want to say that um, embrace my truth, embrace who I am, share who I am, um, and not to hold back. All right. Vali, in your opinion, how has Alice evolved since learning about her identity? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> well, it, she's certainly been released from this uncertainty of who am I? Who am I? And I think there's a wonderful sense of freedom now. 
And with that, I believe that she can move forward and I've seen her do that. She's become a much stronger woman with a, a, a fantastic vibe that kind of emanates that self-confidence that she was missing. All right. Now, Alice, if you could go back and talk to the young Alice who was almost tied to a tree and give her advice based on what you know now, what advice would you give your younger, younger self? Don't be afraid. It will all come to pass. Vali, my final question for you is, now that you've witnessed Alice kind of grow and evolve through this, what do you admire the most about Alice? Can I only pick one thing? I'll give you three. You can pick three things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she certainly has great inner strength and an amazing loving spirit. She's thoughtful and she's generous, but you know what's the most wonderful part of her, and it's always been this way, right from the day I met her at the age of 15, is she, she shows an unconditional love for every human being. Amazing, thank you. I, I can attest to that. So I met Alice six months or so ago, and it was just a very informal connection, but we both agreed as we were reflecting on this moment, that little informal connection was truly life defining, you know, because it led to this experience that we had together. And I can tell you, I, I attest to what you've just said, Billy. She is just has such an exceptional spirit yeah. and love for other people and her courage and bravery to be vulnerable and share this story with all of us is not for her. She's doing it so that other people can relate to her experience. And she's just, she's selfless in that respect. And I just, she makes me even more brave, right? Like watching what you have done here today, Alice, gives me the courage. I can do anything. This is the most <laughs> serious guts. You're my hero and I love you. Thank you for what you did for all of us today. Agreed. I agree with Melissa's sentiments. My final question for you, Alice, is this. How has your life changed after this discovery? I do see the world from different eyes. I do. I, it's a very hard thing to explain, but I've lived in a white world, really. And now I'm living in a world of white and black, and I'm learning about my heritage. And I, it blows me away when I think about things like, you know, great grandparents who are most likely in slavery. Like, it's just really. I'm learning about my heritage. My family is embracing me and helping me to learn about my new heritage. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm very open to it. And I'm reading a lot. And um, yeah, my world has just opened. It's just open and it's great. How fortunate are you? I mean, really, how many people get to see the world from different lenses, like what you're able to see? I know this was difficult and there's a lot of emotions wrapped in it, but this is a blessing. I mean, you get to see the world from multiple perspectives. And I think you now, Alice, your shift in perspective can serve as a bridge for many people who are not able to change their viewpoints. And that's what I meant to the viewers, that this story could be the spark to change your perspective and change your mind. So right. thank you so much for sharing. Thanks. I just want to say, sorry, to interrupt, I just before we go off air, I don't even know how much time we have, but <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you to Melissa, to you and Armani and for doing this and bringing people together with different stories. Uh, the stories I've listened to already are amazing. And my beautiful friend here, Believe, I've known for so long and all my family and friends for supporting uh, you're welcome. Thank you for your courage. Thank you, Vali, for joining us. And I'm going to pass it on to Melissa to take us home. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much for joining. And whether you're watching this live or watching the replay, you can still help contribute to the cause. Uh, visit communitykeynotes.com to learn more about what we're doing. If you have a story that you would like to share with the world and leave this place a better place than how you found it, I encourage you to let us know that you're interested. We will be having a second season. So we will open up applications for those people who want to share their story and be brave, just like Alice did. 
Speaking of bravery, next week we are featuring uh, Pascal Royal. She is, has an amazing story of grit and determination, recovery and overcoming some of the most uh, serious life challenges. And so I encourage you to log on and watch next week, August 13th at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. And the proceeds from her will benefit the National Suicide Hotline. So thank you so much for joining. We appreciate your comments. Thank you for your support. Make sure you let Alice know how much you appreciate her story and chat. And we'll see you next week.